Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Fox 61's coverage of Road to the Championship is sponsored locally by Nissan. Fans in Arizona and stores are cheering on UConn tonight in the men's championship game. Thanks for joining us here on the Fox 61 News at 10. I'm Sarah Sanchez. The game kicked off just over half an hour ago at State Farm Stadium in Glendale. Fans flew out there for all the excitement to support their favorite team tonight. Right now, the score is 32-25. It looks like both teams, though, have scored an additional two points each, so the Huskies are still in the lead by five. We'll continue to follow the score, and it is rapidly changing tonight. Back here in Connecticut, we have live team coverage for all the excitement from the fans in stores. But first, let's send it out to Fox 61's Jake Garcia, who is at one of the largest watch parties happening inside Gamble Pavilion. Jake, how's the atmosphere there? Well, Sarah, the atmosphere is absolutely electric. It's been that way since the doors opened at 730. This crowd is riled up and ready to go. Saturday during that watch party, the atmosphere kind of built throughout the night. This was explosive just right out the gates. Fans were very excited. Of course, tonight's watch party has a lot of stipulations around it that we've been reporting to you. Tickets, students had to get tickets in advance to even come in the doors. Um, but before the game, students actually got to hear a message from the team and head coach Dan Hurley. The band and cheerleaders and Jonathan all here to rile up the crowd. Students have a chance to even win some prizes at tonight's watch party, uh, including a Dan Hurley autographed basketball. Students are just excited to be here and cheer on the Huskies. I asked students just before the game started what they were most excited about, either the Eclipse or the National Championship, and their answer, well, no surprise. inside Gamble. Thank you, Jake. UConn has increased security for tonight's game in the event students get a little out of hand after the game, but things are already getting a bit rowdy on campus outside the arena. Fox 61's Emma Wolfhorst is live in stores to explain what happened tonight. So Emma, what's going on? Well, Sarah, we still don't have a lot of answers yet, but from what we've seen, we've been running around outside the stadium. We talked to students as they were waiting in line to get in. It was all excitement, and there's still students outside. That's now a lot, lot less excitement. It's turning into anger and tears for even some. About half an hour to 45 minutes ago, right as the game was tipping off, students started yelling and crowding around multiple entrances to Gamble Pavilion, saying they were not being allowed in by security. As of right now, we are still not seeing any additional students being let in by security. All these students tell us that they do have tickets. They claim they are ticket holders. There was some talk about scalpers potentially selling tickets for lots of money or scanning tickets multiple times. That is potentially leading to the issues. I talked to students. They told me this is a ticketed event. It was free for students and was supposed to be one ticket ticket per student. I spoke with one student who told me she got her ticket that exact way free one ticket just for her last night. But when she showed up to scan it today, it turned red and she was not allowed into the game. Take a listen to what she had to say. I got one ticket for myself. It was sent to my email. Um, I didn't share the link with anybody. I didn't share the ticket with anybody. I didn't buy it secondhand. And when I scanned it, um, it turned red and they turned me away because they said it, it had already been used. And that student, Kate, a freshman, told us she was so, so excited to come 
to the game tonight, which obviously now she's just walking around outside, not being allowed in. She told us she showed her confirmation emails multiple times to security, but was still told, uh, turned away. They told her if it's scans read, you're not allowed in. She asked if she could speak with any sort of ticket office or another security person. They told her you can file a complaint tomorrow. Now, we did reach out to the University of Connecticut. A spokesperson, Mike Enright, told us that the event tonight at Gamble Pavilion, the watch party, has not been oversold at all. He says lots of people showed up at game time, so entrances have been closed for a while. And he told us the capacity for tonight was 6,740 people. But again, that's not what we're hearing on the ground here from students. They tell us they got our, their tickets the right way. They say they are valid tickets, but they're being turned away. And there's really a lot of sadness and a lot of people are upset tonight as they wish they were inside cheering on the Huskies. So we'll have to see what happens as the game goes on, if people are eventually allowed in or if they'll just have to listen from outside. Sarah. All right. Thank you, Emma. And Connecticut's new station has you covered for the championship game between UConn and Purdue. Stay with us as UConn tries to bring home another championship and will be in stores tonight, making sure things remain calm no matter the outcome here. It was all eyes on the Eclipse today, wearing Eclipse glasses, of course, and it was a beautiful, clear day for it. Let's check in with meteorologist Sam Sampuri for a first look at the forecast. Sam, it was so nice just to have a sunny day, Eclipse aside, right? Yes, we did. Yes, we had a beautiful day. It got into the low 70s. We did have some high clouds. Joe Spinal sent this to us earlier. Look at these, this eclipse. We had a partial eclipse here, but we did end up going uh, up to 93% at the height of it at 327. This is just one picture. Many pictures being sent to us. I just want to go back in time here a little bit, and I'm going to just uh, drop the clock back six hours or so, and it's getting dark and can't see that circle going around. I have the wrong uh, picture up. But anyways, satellite showing that we have a couple of light sprinkles, but they're falling apart as they move along here. We have high pressure that will be building in for your Tuesday. Tuesday's the pick of your week. Check it out overnight. We'll have partly cloudy to clear skies. And then during the day tomorrow, look at the sunshine coming out. Mostly sunny, warm, and pleasant. And tonight's temperatures will hold in the 40s, but tomorrow it's going to be a nice day. The drive commute tomorrow is going to be fine, mild and dry during the morning hours, and yes, we're going to have sunshine and warm conditions during the afternoon. No weather problems, just grab the sunglasses and you only need the regular ones tomorrow. And for the highs, look at this, up into the low 70s, maybe even the mid 70s in northern Connecticut. Coming up, and by the way, the sun comes up at 619, going down at 726, we're gaining that daylight. I'll talk about the rest of the week. Some big changes on the way as we head towards the middle end of the week. Yes, get ready for some more rain. Details in a few minutes. Sarah? Thank you, Sam. New at 10, Hartford police are looking for a driver who struck two people with their car, then took off. Police say it happened on Garden Street this afternoon. Those two people are in the hospital tonight. They're expected to recover. Police are not sharing many details, but they're asking any witnesses to come forward so they can find that hit and run suspect. A police officer in New Haven is recovering from a leg injury they got during an ATV traffic stop. Police say the officer was hit by an ATV and the injury is serious. Here's the photo of the driver and the group the driver was with. If you know or recognize any of these people, you're asked to call the New Haven Police Department. You can remain anonymous. Police have been encountering more and more of these illegal ATV and dirt bike riders. Right now, state lawmakers are pushing a proposal forward that would increase fines and license suspensions for anyone caught. The big thing is the ability to destroy any dirt bikes and ATVs that are seized. State law only allows them be sold at auction, but cities don't want to recirculate them. No word yet on when a vote would happen, but the House floor is working on it. Police have identified the man whose body was found in the Pocketuck River just over the Connecticut border. Westerly police say Matthew Boulet was found in the river this morning. He reportedly fell into the water last night. Police say the incident is not suspicious. A major update now on a cold case out of Hamden. Police are announcing two arrests today. Police arresting Daryl McFadden and Patrick Ratliff Jones in connection to the shooting death of Dennis Allen Page. The 21-year-old 
was shot dead during a robbery on Whiting Street back in December of 2019. Some of Page's family members were at today's announcement saying they're glad they now have some kind of justice. I pray that no one ever has to go through what my family has experienced for the last four years, three months, 25 days, or simply stated 1,577 days. Back in 2021, state police offered a $50,000 reward for information leading to an arrest and a conviction.